This is a simple demonstration tape of the Sun TAC-1 accelerator board. We just pointed the TV camera straight at the normal Sun color graphics screen. I'll now start up uh, one of the TAC demos. We'll do some graphics demos first and then some image processing demos. The first demo uses software in the TAC-1 accelerator board for vector drawing and polygon drawing. I've just loaded in a simple object. All the transformations and vector drawing that you see here are done by software in the TAC-1 accelerator board. There's no special hardware for vector drawing. There's also no special hardware for doing uh, polygon drawing. This is uh, garotiated Z-buffered polygons. All the demos you'll see here on this tape were made on a piece of prototype hardware running at about half speed from the production units. The color insert that you see here on the screen is generated by the TAC-1 accelerator board. The rest of the uh, monochrome image is all generated by the normal Sun graphics board. The TAC has the ability to put a window at any location within the Sun standard windowing system. All the normal Sun windowing features work just fine. quit that demo and now go on to another one. This is an application that was ported over by um, some people at Scripps Clinic. It's a mo molecular modeling application that uses the transformation and line drawing routines that are part of the libraries that come with the TAC-1. We also added a special feature for this customer which was a, a sphere drawing primitive to be used for molecular modeling. Uh, we're loading in the customers. The weight you see here is because we're loading in the customers uh, data file. It's a large ASCII file. The display you see here is, a, is of a stick figure model of, a, of an atom. Uh, we've got scaling and rotation as interactive parts of the demo. Interesting though is, is the fact that the customer has some energy calculations showing the vibration of the molecule at particular temperatures. Let me switch to the alternative display mode which shows the speed of the TAC-1 when used for application-specific graphics primitives. Another example of the application-specific graphics primitives is in drawing wiggle traces for seismic uh, interpretation operations. Let me load in a, a data file here. This is a set of seismic data. On the left-hand side, you see one type of presentation um, called variable density display. On the right, you see a, uh, an enormous vector list, about 400,000 vectors a second being redrawn here. So I can move this, and you can see it in redrawing vectors on the right-hand side. These vectors actually represent the amplitude of the data at any particular point. We can, so it's like a strip chart recording. I can change some of the gain here on the, on the strip chart. It would probably take several seconds to recompute and display every uh, one of these images instead of a mere fraction of a second that you see here if we didn't use the uh, programmable feature of the TAC-1 for doing this type of, of strip chart display. Another example is a piece of ray tracing code that we ported over. This originally runs on, we originally developed it on a Sun 3 workstation and this code takes about uh, 30 minutes to render this ray traced uh, image that you see here on a Sun 3. This is real-time rendering. This is not being loaded from a disk but it's actually rendering um, this data as you see it. This is actually a cone tracer so you see the soft shadows and anti-aliasing um, that are included in the program. Again as I said this is not uh, not being loaded from disk. It's actually being recomputed. I'll do a small rotation and change the index of refraction on the uh, on a crystal sphere and re-render it. You can see I've, I've rotated around so the uh, crystal sphere is up toward the front and change the index of refraction on it.
one of the things we like to demonstrate is the ability to do uh, a blend of imaging and, and graphics operations. This is a bicubic B-spline patch rendering uh, algorithm that, um, let me move the window here a little bit. There we go. The uh, control points for the patch are passed over from the, the Sun CPU and a program running on the Sun CPU to the TAC-1 accelerator processor and then the actual patch rendering and subdivision uh, all take place on the TAC-1. We're just modifying control points from the main program. We can also do surface shading, which you would expect to be able to find at a pretty good rate. I will just warp the surface here a little bit and you can see the effect of warping on the surface. Let me do a rotate around so you can see this really is a three-dimensional surface. But one of the things that we can do with the TAC-1 is, is to do more complicated rendering uh, techniques such as texture mapping. Here we're mapping an image onto the bicubic patch. Again, if we rotate it around, you can see we're really got a three-dimensional patch here. The TAC-1 was designed not only to provide high performance for normal functions like line and polygon drawing, but more importantly for very complex functions such as high quality rendering or, or uh, image processing. The next demo is an example of another uh, bicubic rendering algorithm. This is from a, a new algorithm developed by uh, some people at Sun Microsystems. It was reported on in the SIGGRAPH uh, proceedings this year. Uh, it's an adaptive forward differencing technique for doing um, uh, patch rendering or curved surface rendering. You can see that the patches are actually being painted in, in parametric space rather than in screen scan line space. Let me rotate that around a little bit and re-render. This shows the parametric space rendering technique a little bit better. The idea of the algorithm is, is that this is just an initial implementation in software but it could be made to run many, many times faster in, in hardware. It's uh, ideally suited for that. We did a, a slight modification to just use the adaptive forward differencing algorithm to uh, determine the, uh, the subdivisions for a triangle drawing routine. So this is not as good a quality image, but it, it uh, runs a little bit faster because uh, we do have some optimized uh, polygon drawing routine. Let's move on and look at some image processing applications now of, of the TAC-1. Uh, the first one we'll look at is uh, something particularly useful for um, both satellite imaging and for um, medical uh, imaging. This is a, a chest x-ray um, on its side, but uh, we can go in and change some of the grayscale assignments. This is the sort of thing that's normally done using video lookup tables in an image processor type uh, system. The TAC-1 programmable processor is fast enough so that we're actually doing this in code running through the TAC-1 processor rather than through video lookup tables. Just showing the pseudocolor capability. Uh, doctors don't like to see this, but uh, other people can sometimes find it useful. And it's just meant to give an idea of what the throughput is, reading images from one part of memory through the processor and writing out to another part of memory. Another routine that will give you an example of, of that throughput is one we'll load up a few images that were pre-computed. And uh, we can use, let's see, that looks like we'll use that one for one of them. And I'll load a few more. These are, are scanned in or, or pre-computed images that we're loading off disk. TAC-1 includes a 1K by 2K by 32-bit frame buffer. Here we're looking at the bottom 1K by 1K section of that. And now in the top 1K section, I'll, I'll start up a routine that will read in from the bottom part each of these 512 squared images and rate them 90 degrees write them back out again. So every time you see an image, it's actually written four times. 
All this again is running through the processor. There's no special bitlet hardware or anything like that. And this could just as easily be 32-bit floating point data as it is 32-bit integer data used for, for pictures. Along that line, um, we've run a little routine here. It's a two-dimensional fast Fourier transform routine, which actually uses floating point numbers, but keeps the floating point numbers in a portion of screen that we can see. Let me load in an, an image to work on. Um, let's see. No use a, a head x-ray. Change the color map around a little bit and open the window size up some. The box that you see on the left hand side is a 256 by 256 box and this will be the area from which we'll start 2D FFT. When I start it now you'll see an, an area in the bottom left hand part of the picture that's the flow point data being used for calculation of the forward transform and inverse transform. That um, ran as you saw it. I'll do, do this again except this time we'll do a uh, do a high pass filter in the frequency domain. This routine on an unaccelerated uh, processor runs about eight minutes instead of the few seconds that you see here. Let's look at a few other uh, operations that we might do. Uh, we can go back to black and white for this. Uh, threshold operator, that's pretty simple sort of thing. This is a C program written uh, running on the TAC. Uh, Two-dimensional convolution, this uses a 3x3 three three, uh, kernel. It's doing convolutions as you see it here. We can also load very large images. The file that wasn't uh, one in memory. Here we go. This is an image that was computed by Wavefront Technologies. It's just being loaded. This is uh, a 1024 by 768 image. And of course, since we have a, a 1024 by 2048 memory, you can keep several of these images around. One of the other image processing demos that we have that shows something about the processing power of the TAC-1 involves a, a benchmark a piece of code that we did for customer. We'll load in that chest x-ray again. This is an adaptive histogram equalization program. Um, this program took 45 minutes running on a VAX 1150 and just takes a few seconds as you see it running here. involves computing the um, histogram at every pixel on the screen. This is a 512 by 512 area and then re-equalizing the value of that pixel based on the histogram.